Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Lion. Very nervously plays the Binding of Isaac Rebirth because it's the first run I have done in nine days, eight days. I was away for a long time in in England previewing some games and enjoying myself in what is apparently the world's most goddamn heinously expensive city. I didn't get a chance to play much Rebirth except for the flight back, so I'm a little nervous. That's why I'm playing as Isaac. It might not be where I am in the random rotation, but I need, like, a run to get my, my sea legs underneath me, and I want to do it on camera. MDB8 EP67. Let's start with the basics. This is not an XL floor, so we can hurt ourselves, and this is a good start. Oh, man, even the keyboard feels weird to me right now. This is very strange. It's, it's hard to explain. You ever have like a cast or something? I've never broken a bone in my life, but I have had uh, I've had some slings and I've had a cast once uh, temporarily. And when it comes off, it's like your your body part. I didn't have a dick cast. I should just say it was my leg. You know, when you say body part, it's like what are you trying to hide, Northern Lion? Let's see what's in here before I go on crickets. Body uh, fucks with our range, I think, but for the most part, I like it. Don't necessarily want to take the pill yet. A little nervous. Um, you have you have atrophy basically. I guess the other thing would be like if you had if you've been in a period of sustained bed rest for a long time. You have atrophy. You know your muscles are not as strong as they used to be. So you stand up and you're a little wobbly. It doesn't feel natural. That's kind of how it feels to me right now. I'm like you know Isaac feels a little bit like it's a language my brain commonly deals with, and now it's like it hasn't spoken that language in a little while. I'm slightly nervous. That's okay. Um, you know that's why I want one run here that hopefully will be a little bit easier than average to get my. Sea legs back underneath me. We're at eight cents, uh, and I would. The spirit art is one thing. I would prefer to get the PhD if possible because it would, you know, make our pill good if it wasn't already good, and would make all pills in the future good. It has a better long-term uh, outlook for us versus just a spirit art. If that. Spirit Heart do isn't critical necessarily for us getting a deal with the devil, but I'm not gonna be too, you know, fancy with it. I only have one bomb, so it's pretty unlikely for me to get to 15 cents unless we get Pageant Boy or, you know, I don't even know what else right here. Jesus Juice, I'll just take... I will take the pill. It's 48 hour energy, which is absolutely fine. And the Jesus Juice plus Pentagram plus Cricket's Body Pickup. I mean, there's a range upgrade associated with Jesus Juice, I think, which is... Good here. Uh, we will use our bomb, and the hope in using the bomb is that we get enough money, if not to buy a PhD, to buy this and then still be able to go down to the next floor uh, and have a chance to get an arcade and get enough money so that this shit doesn't happen to us again. So I think this is a pretty successful first floor for us, and uh, I'm not really, not really scared about how this is going right now. Also, I just got a message on Skype from uh, our good old friend Mathis Games, and it didn't lag the game. What the heck's going on? I should leave the continent more often. That apparently has solved a lot of problems for me. This is very strange. Mathis says, if this is like this promoted tweets for him or something like that. I can't believe that almost worked. Mathis says, you must build a boat is very fun. It's like 10 million, but it has some sweet additions. I'm enjoying it. Thank you, Mathis Games, for your uh, riveting insight. I'm only half joking. Yeah, Mom's Contact is a great pickup for us. Uh, and then, if as if that glowing recommendation were not enough. I saw on Steam that Mathis Games signed on to play You Must Build a Boat. What a nice dude. He is clearly... Oh, that's uh, actually a very dangerous pill for us right now. He is clearly not being disingenuous or deliberately misrepresentative with his uh, discourse there. He really seems to enjoy this game. That's good. I like 10 million. Kate really likes 10 million. I like 10 million uh, a decent amount. I was excited to play that. Lots of good stuff came out while I was actually away. Hopefully some of that stuff has already hit the channel in the form of Let's Look At. It's like Big Pharma? That game is awesome, man. I, I, when I should have been doing Rebirth yesterday, probably getting my sea legs underneath me off camera. Instead, I played a bunch of Big Pharma, and that game is really cool. Let's fight our boss here. I'm, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling relaxed. I'm, in particular, feeling like the game has been very, very kind to us. Like, extraordinarily so. Um, it's pretty ridiculous how we've gotten so many good items so far and I haven't yet had to touch the D6. Super Bandage also helps out fantastically with that and the Pact is nothing to sneeze at, man. This is a really, really good start for an Isaac run. We've gotten a lot of damage upgrades 
try to find the secret room. We got the bombs. We got a lot of damage upgrades, a lot of tiers upgrades, some DPS upgrades. You know, those are basically covered all of them, I guess. Uh, we still have a curse room to go to, and we might get uh, nine lives. No, we get, might get Anarchist Cookbook and be able to reroll it. Lover's card is great if we get an arcade. As of yet, has not happened. Maybe we'll get lucky and find a. Uh, secret room there that'll allow us to access the boss trap room and almost well actually with bombs enough money to buy that starter deck which is something that I will be interested in I wasn't able to get the PhD so the starter deck is fine by me that's not you know it didn't have to rhyme but I'm glad that it did because I think it emphasizes the point a little further anyway this is good we got big red tears call them Clifford tears after the big red dog I don't actually do that but we can do that now in the future if you're interested in you know, you just pay me a small royalty every time you say it, and then it'll be no problem. We're gonna just kill Larry Jr. here. We're up to 22 cents and a couple extra keys as well. Lots of spirit hearts, so I got nothing basically at all to worry about. It's way too early to go down on a limb and call it a one run. It's probably too early to be even saying that spiel about how it's too early. However, uh, this is this is interesting. So these pills are bad. We could go get starter deck and then come back in and get tarot cards that, dare I say, it might actually be good. We're not sure if that's actually going to work out for us, but I think for one spirit heart, the novelty of it is enough for me to give it a shot. So let's, uh, let's give it a shot. Could get sharp plug as well, but, you know, let's be honest, I'm better with starter deck. So we have the world card. Uh, we've already found our secret room, so it makes sense to save the world card for the next floor. I think we'll drop the lover's card. Well, not drop, we'll use it, because we don't expect to take that with us right now. Especially with two uh, other tarot cards being available over here. Hopefully one of them is like a teleportation. We got the chariot and temperance. So we'll drop temperance here. Actually, these work fantastically together. It might not be the best usage for them, like, individually. Or together, for that matter. However, we will be able to basically, for one spirit heart, get a decent chance at getting... A little bit of money. I was hoping for a little bit more than that, but that's okay. We could have chariot carded out as well, but uh, all things considered, I think that went relatively well. And we can actually go back and buy sharp plug now, but it is a touch risky. I I have sharp plug myself nearly into oblivion sometimes, but it's probably better to have it than not have it. And on the off chance we pick up the wafer or something like that, it's incredibly useful. Um, let's buy that card as well. That could be a joker or something of similar usefulness. Is a two of diamonds, which is actually also amazing. So, uh, I wish I'd known that before I bought something, but at the same time, now we have a, a big upside on this, if we can ever get a, a decent amount of money to use with it. I'm really happy with how that floor went down, and despite that seeming like it took a long time, we're still in a great position here, in terms of the, uh, uh, boss rush, if that's something we're interested in. But if it's even, like, close to being a, a contest, I probably won't. Why not reroll the virus? That was uh, admittedly a little bit of a sloppy play. It's still, old habits are hard to break, man. I still sometimes think of the virus and I'm like, oh, that's a good item because it was a decent item in. Oh, I hate that. Because it was a decent item in uh, vanilla, but it's not really a decent item anymore. Should have put this bomb in the middle for a better chance at the crawl space. Uh, not a huge problem, probably, but that's something I should be paying attention to. This is what this is all about. You know, this is a refresher course. I appreciate that uh, eternal heart. This is a refresher course, so I will be taking the opportunity to hopefully uh, critique myself and iron out some of these flaws that may seem minor on this run. But I'll admit, you know, I'm guilty of being uh, a little bit too blasé about my overall mechanical uh, performance sometimes on good runs. I'll be like, well, I made a mistake, but it doesn't really matter. On this run, it could matter because, you know, if I had set the precedent of me playing poorly and then I have a run that also happens to be difficult, that is where it becomes a problem, you know? You don't want to be the... Well, actually, a lot of people do want to be this person, but, you know, you don't want to be the dude who has, like, a rich dad so he never has to try anything in his life, and then all of a sudden, you know, the 2008 recession hits, and now, like, his financial stakes... Stigmata's really good here. Well, pretty good, at least. Uh, um, all of a sudden, you know, he, he's got no financial clout anymore, so he needs to do something, but, it, you know, he's never worked a day in his life, so he doesn't understand how to get anything done. I don't think we need anything in here. Might want to go for a reroll, but... We don't have the money necessarily yet, although we could use two of diamonds. It's a bit of a complicated situation. Basically, what I'm getting at is, is you want to be, everybody should be, strive to be from the Mighty Ducks 1, Charlie Conway. You know, a, a kid who struggled a little bit and as a result developed his natural talent for, uh, and a nose for the net, you know? You don't want to be Adam, is it Adam Banks? 
Adam Banks eventually reached out retribution, but at the start of the game, or the start of the movie, he's just kind of a dick. Don't be Adam Banks. You want to be you want to be Charlie Conway. What the fuck am I talking about? All right. It's okay. This is a good run so far. A minute and a half to still be on a good pace for boss rush, although it's not an enormous deal either way. Good shop items. Uh can't really complain about anything. Deal with the devil precedent does exist. I would love goat head, but that's uh, something that's probably a little bit more on the uh, on the outside looking in for now. Thank you to the, you know it's finally to the point where my backlog for Isaac isn't so huge. So I've known for a long time that I was going to have uh, a streak that hit 50. Thank you guys for the incredible congratulations on that. It's a nice milestone. I have to be honest. Uh, it, as awesome as it is to hit 50. It almost feels muted because it wasn't that hard, and that is not me trying to humble brag. It's actually me saying, you know, thank you to the, the gods of RNG for not giving me many runs that were, like, looking bad along that uh, that stretch. So, I'm, I'm very thankful that we've managed to make it this far, and I'm hoping that, uh, you know, what are we... Well, if we're at, like, 53, we need, like, another two weeks of not losing. That's pretty significant, but if we can get that happening and get to 100, that would be amazing, man. I... I would be, uh, I would be amazed. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Uh, we can, we can do a lot of stuff here. So we definitely want Dark Bum, not a doubt in our minds. We probably want Spirit of the Night, and we should probably re-roll this one, and we got Necronomicon, which is terrible. But, uh, on the other, ah, we should have used Sharp Plug in there. We could have afforded the Spirit Hearts. Anyway, this is, this is, uh, very, very good for us. I still don't really want to do anything with the the shop on this floor I'd rather save our money but I will go back for the golden chest what's our other on the world um, yeah let's do that could have gotten into the curse room uh, not for free I guess because we're low on bombs but relatively close to it Hagala's room convenient opportunity to use it didn't get anything out of it moon card hermit card hermit card is a little bit better than the moon card I think it's a little debatable admittedly thank you dark bomb uh, and let's head down to the next floor I'm going to try not to talk about the streaks, you know, so much, because as far as I'm concerned, we're not on a 54 streak, or a 53 streak, I guess. We're on a 3 streak, and we just got to hit our second streak in a row of 50, and then if we do so, hey, you know, life's good. What can I say? For now, though, I'm just hoping to have fun and keep my skills sharp for when, uh, you know, Afterbirth comes out. I am going to use both keys here. A little risky. Maggie's Faith, uh, considering we have no other trinket, that seems like a solid choice inside of our shop and why don't we use this now I mean we're, we're in a decent situation to use it we have our Joker card available as well and uh, we're coming close to the end of the usefulness of, of shops so you know to get to 19 cents at this point is, is fairly solid but I'll admit that it probably doesn't seem like the best idea to use uh, two of diamonds to buy the freaking piggy bank but if we get an arcade on this floor you're gonna be sorry I'll tell you that we're gonna generate you know dozens dozens and dozens of pennies that could possibly provide us with some benefit at some nebulous point in the future. Loki's Horns is uh, uh, the ultimate in home re-rollables. I am pretty much not interested in that at all. And in some ways would actually prefer to have nothing than that. So that's going to be like also a, a fairly low priority re-roll target, I guess. Deal with the Devil is going to be a little bit more useful. Uh, although I'll admit there's a pretty good chance we're just going to get a Deal with the Devil naturally as well. Ah, whatever. This is suboptimal usage of this, but we had a, a reroll ready, so I thought I'd give it a try. And I wouldn't say it necessarily ended up going well, but it wasn't the enormous backfire that it could have been either, I guess. And if we take red hard damage on this floor, we could. Ah, it's not worth it. If we take. Oh, I walked into it by accident. <laughs> if we take red hard damage on this floor, I could um, lower my chances of getting a deal with the devil to, you know, relatively raise them on the next floor, but. I don't think there's many ways for us to take red heart damage on this floor without uh, also torpedoing our HP. Like our spirit hearts. So instead what we'll do is we'll take the judgment down to the next floor and we'll try to blow it up to give ourselves a better chance of getting a deal with the devil. Because that's, I mean I talked about this but in case you did not see, one of the reasons you don't like to use a joker card unless you're sure that you're not going to get a deal with the devil. And I realize this runs contrary to my actions in this episode thus far but uh is because it, it lowers your chances of getting a deal with the devil on the next floor by giving you... Well, not it doesn't directly lower them, I guess, but it indirectly lowers them if you get another deal with the devil that you don't need afterwards. 
So anything that we can do to raise our deal with the devil chances on the next floor, assuming we're pretty much guaranteed to get one on this floor, is, uh, is something that we should probably take advantage of. Still somewhat, you know, at a decent uh, timeline if we're talking about boss rush. Awa's rune is solid. Oh, this is perfect. If I could, I wish, I wish I could have kept it a little closer, but that's okay. We'll use our Awa's rune over here quickly. It is not a crawl space, but we have had good luck with that in the semi-recent history, so I'm not gonna complain. Oh, I totally missed that there was another. I thought that that was like guaranteed to be the end of the floor, but that's okay. Doesn't look like we're going to be able to bomb our way into that boss trap room, which in a way is good, you know, it saves me a little bit of time. Unless there is a blood bank, in which case I may consider going for it, but it would have to... No, uh, never mind. <laughs> we don't even have to finish that sentence because there is no blood bank available, so unless we get a temperance card, we are not getting in there. This is, in a weird way, not one, but definitely almost unlosable, and I know those seem somewhat at odds with one another, but like, I, I don't want to call it a one run because our damage is not absolutely insane yet. Uh, I don't know if I love that, but I took it anyway. Fire raid still seems pretty good. We've already been to that deal with the devil. We got judgment for the next floor. Um, but we are basically unkillable. Uh, with Dark Bum, it, it's pretty hard for us to die here. We have died on runs with Dark Bum before, but, you know, if you have Dark Bum and have decent damage, that's that's a lot, man. That's like being good-looking and intelligent, you know? There's lots of good-looking, intelligent people who have not succeeded in life the way that they probably had the potential to, but it gives you a leg up, you gotta admit, you know? I'm an optimistic person, but it, uh, it would make your life better, for the most part, if, you were, if I were more intelligent or more attractive than I was. I know uh, most people think that that's not possible. <laughs> However, gives you a gives you a leg up on the on the competition. You could be like, uh, you know, you could strive to occupy Kate Upton's role in the Game of War ads. The g man, okay, I, I I can't be cynical about mobile gaming because it's still video games, right? And I've played a lot of good mobile games in my day. A lot of games that I've been very happy with. I'm struggling to think of them right now, but uh, Quiz Up, Quiz Up was pretty fun. Uh, desert golfing, ridiculous fishing. There's lots of good like Android, iOS games, um, Super Brother Sword and Sorcery, etc., etc. But it really shows you what the motives of the developers behind Game of War are. When when you see like they they do promoted tweets, it's not like our game has five on the App Store. It's like number one game between males of ages 18 to 35. Check out Game of War, and you're like, man, that is like. I mean, could you at least try to act like you're you're proud of the content of the game, not just its its performance due to like a multi-million dollar marketing campaign that literally is inescapable right now? I'm not again, I'm not cynical about it. That's that's how mobile games uh well, that's how the mobile games market sort of is right now. You know, because other companies are spending millions and millions of dollars on huge ad campaigns targeted at mass media. If you want your game to compete, it either has to be really, really, really good, and then also get some kind of, like, loudspeaker attention, um, or you gotta do exactly the same thing. It's just, I don't know. Your team has, like, less programmers on it than it has, like, monetization engineers and stuff like that. It's easy to be a little cynical about it, isn't it? And I, I try to stay out of that stuff for the most part, but... Oh, that is the cutest face I have ever seen on these guys. There's a new uh, Instagram account for you. Faces of Isaac. Whenever you have mom's contact, freeze an enemy. Take a snapshot, send it in. We'll be like the sartorial list for Isaac. Uh, this is Depths 1, I think. So if we wanted to, we could leave here and still have a pretty good chance of getting to boss rush. I'm hoping that blowing up that judgment is going to do what it needs to do in order to give us a... Oh, in order to give us a chance of getting a... Uh, a deal with the devil, but if we don't, we don't, you know? We, we still have the, the tools necessary to definitely pull out a win here. I mean, we're already at the HP cap, and with, like, HP cap plus, you know, we have a surplus of HP that we are unable to use, and admittedly, our damage is not that fantastic now, but uh, that's because, you know, it's, it's deflated a little bit by the fact that we're fighting a boss who's somewhat tanky. Also, I can't believe I picked up Penetrative Tears, Piercing Shots, and did not even mention it, uh, despite the fact that I ask for them on every single run. What an asshole. I think we're just gonna leave. Uh, we have a chance to do boss rush. Uh, we've already been to item room and shop. Let's go. 
we bought both of the things available at each, and this is Curse of the Blind, so I don't want to spend any more time on this bullshit if we can avoid it. Okay, we got tons of HP, we don't need to sweat this. Uh, we'll enter here, and that was not the ideal curse room, but, you know, life goes on. Should remember that we have Sharp Plug. Uh, I have not used it yet. That's a, a noob trap. Using it too much is also a noob trap. The whole game is, is noob traps. Your whole life is a noob trap. A sand trap is a noob trap. We actually do have the opportunity to ma- Ooh, thank you, old man. Excuse me. That was- that was mine. Uh, we do have the opportunity to probably go into our boss trap room here, if I choose to do so. I- I would weight the boss rush room, especially if we have a teleportation card, as more valuable, but if we get the opportunity to do it, then cool, man. You know, any- any extra advantage that we can take for ourselves, uh, within a reasonable time frame is something that I will pay, uh, a civil amount of attention to. You'll ex ah! I was gonna say, if you'll excuse me, I would like to, uh, get out of this room. Thank you. I'm gonna let you drop that stuff until I get to the HP cap, because it's useful information, you know? We can kind of get around the fact that there is Curse of the Unknown by just forcing as many spirit heart drops as possible, and when we can't pick them up anymore, we know we can start picking up red hearts and we're, uh, sitting pretty when it comes to HP. I think we have two HP, which is actually important. Yeah, I'll take it. I think it's important to keep that in mind when it comes to deals with the devils, so... Uh, I'm not nervous about that, really. I'm not nervous about death. I'm nervous about maybe accidental, uh, bleh, accidentally killing myself with Curse of the Unknown, but it's probably going to be fine. Don't really want Red Candle. I'll buy a Spirit Heart just to keep it on the up and up, and uh, why don't we donate a little bit? As much as we can. It's not looking likely that Boss Rush is going to happen, but that's okay. There's options. Here's a cool Easter egg. If it, it doesn't exist, but how cool would it be if it did? Answer. Like, a little cool, but not really that much. If, uh, you have there's options, it should give you two Polaroids and two, uh, negatives to choose from. Man, it's been so long since I've chosen the negative that I actually forgot its name. I, I've, people have tweeted me about this because I've been talking about, talking about it lately. Um, shouldn't have picked that up. But, uh, some people have been saying, you know, I prefer the chest, some people have been saying it would be nice if you did, like, once every 20 runs, you did the dark room or something like that. I'm gonna do the chest on this run, but maybe I'll, I'll think about mixing it up. If I haven't done a dark room run in recent memory, maybe I'll consider going for it. Um, the other thing I want to ask people about, I, I appreciate that feedback, by the way, the other thing I want to ask people about is... Randoming the Lost. I had a lot of people as the streak has been growing here, and they've been like, hey, you should really just use an online randomizer so the Lost doesn't show up and ruin your streak. Now, of course, I've been aware of the fact that the Lost could show up, which is why when I random, I, you know, cross my fingers and toes and, and my testicles and my, you know, seminal vesicles, and I just hope that it works out for us. I don't think... This was not a good idea, probably, because we could have done more, but I thought that maybe we had a chance to do boss rush if we went really fast, but that was unreasonably optimistic. Anyway, um... But I've been kind of under the impression that that was the hook. I was like, you know, that makes the randoms more exciting, and also... It's a little bit of bragging rights on the unlikely chance that we succeeded on a lost run in the middle of the streak. So, um, that, that's kind of been my opinion on it, but as more and more people have tweeted me, I, I'll open it up for discussion. You know, if you're watching this video, feel free to, to hit me up or leave a comment and be like, you know, would you rather I use the randomizer? Obviously, we're taking the puller right on this one. Um, and we'll take this. Would you rather I, I used an online randomizer that made it impossible to get the lost, or would you rather I continue randoming with the chance to get the lost? Me, personally, um, I, I care about, and this might seem suspect sometimes, but I care about the entertainment value of the videos more than I care about the, uh, the streak itself, you know? That's why back in January we had, like, that 20 streak, and every, I was making, like, exclusively good game decisions in order to be like, I don't want to lose the streak, and people were like, hey, I'm going to stop watching your shit because you're not doing zany stuff anymore. If I wanted to watch, you know, pro players, I'd watch pro players. Fair enough. I switched it up. Now I got a great streak going with Zany Play, where I, you know, throw away run one runs at every available opportunity. Um, but if people would rather me have the chance to random the lost, not a problem. We'll continue with business as usual. If people are attached to the streak and would rather see me lose it in a way that is not just, you know, quote unquote, is not my words, quote unquote, you know, bad game design or you know, cheap character, unfair, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, then that's fine too. I'm. You know, if, if I lose the streak on this run, or on the next run, or I random the lost, uh, life goes on, you know, I'm gonna... I'll be a little sad to see it go, especially, you know, because, you know, the, the knowledge is there that it will take so fucking long to get back to this point in the future again, uh, if we ever, ever have the chance to do so. But, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go 
kiss my wife and live my life, you know? That's, that's the, old, the old kiss your wife, live your life adage. Um, I, what I'm saying is life goes on, you know? I, I'm, I'm not gonna lose sleep over it if we ran into Lost. And, you know, I've been operating under the assumption that every single run where we ran them particularly could be our last. To some extent, every run could be our last. But definitely, you know, the, the tension is up as I'm randoming. So, uh, yeah, that was a very roundabout way to say basically let me know how you feel about it. I'm interested and, you know, I, I never uh, want to forget that Basically, I'm in this position thanks to you guys, so that's why I also try not to get too up my own butt about, you know, when people are complaining about poor play or mistakes or stuff like that. I, I, you know, you gotta vent from time to time, but uh, I, I really appreciate your support, and without getting too sappy here, I I wouldn't be where I am without you. So let, let me know what you want, and I will respond to your demands accordingly, hopefully. For me, like the darkroom stuff... I would much rather go to the chest in the dark room. Not saying I don't care about that feedback, but I find the chest more interesting. Randoming the lost, or randoming with a chance to have the lost versus randoming without a chance to have the lost is not really that big of a gameplay factor for me, so, you know. I'll pick where we go for dinner, and you can pick, uh, you know, where we go for ice cream afterwards, is what I'm trying to say. If you live in a place that has enough ice cream parlors, first off, if you live, are ice cream parlors still a thing? Like, I'm, I'm in Vancouver, there are some hipster, like, ice cream parlor things, and I don't use hipster as a bad word, because the ice cream is fucking bomb. However, uh, there's no, like, uh, we, we don't have, like, many Baskin Robbins or anything around here anymore. Many, many Dairy Queens, and you go to the Dairy Queen, they're always trying to sell you on these uh, Orange Julius smoothies and whatnot. Also, mostly when I go to Dairy Queen, I don't know if this has the same reputation in the United States, but when I was a kid, Dairy Queen was like this cool... Well, okay, cool might be a little... a bit of a stretch, but it was this place where you'd go and be like, you know, the, the, fam the whole family can show up, have some ice cream, get a chicken strip basket, don't look at the nutritional information for the chicken strip basket. Um, now, every Dairy Queen I see, I'm like, man, I don't want to get stabbed. Like, I could really go for a mint Oreo blizzard, but I really, really value the whole not getting stabbed portion of my day. They're all looking real stabby lately around here, and I don't know if that's just that's just where I live. Well, it's not even just where I live, because in my in my hometown, the Dairy Queens are they're getting to Sketch City as well. But it's like, it's weird. Quiznos are like that as well. Every Quiznos is like a a haunted house. Fuck it, let's try a little something special here. Oh, that's real dumb. Every Quiznos is like inside of a haunted house in a, a scary city. Man, I am a little bit scared of how dangerous I was playing there, but that's okay. We got Rotten Baby out of it. Might have been better with just Sacrificial Dagger. You know, is Rotten Baby four spirit hearts better than Sacrificial Dagger? That's very debatable. But we do have Dark Bomb, so I'm hoping that... Um, we can, you know, get our HP back hopefully soon. That was probably stupid, though, and I don't want to amp up the uh, tension where it's not necessarily there, but it could cost us our streak. I don't know why every Quiznos looks like a haunted house. Maybe the business is not going well. Maybe that's part of their driving ethos as a company. We want people to be scared while they're also having, you know, as much pepperoncini as they want. It's a sad, man, because I, you know... I love fast food sandwiches. I'll just come out and say it, man. I'm not afraid. We don't really want that. Um, I I get down with Subway regularly, but I prefer Quiznos subs. And I don't know if that's like a regional difference again, or it's just me being silly, because people are like, you know, Quiznos is bad. I don't think so, man. I think Quiznos is pretty good. But every Quiznos that I go to, I do walk into it under the assumption that there is probably like a 30%... Well, no, that's ridiculous. There's probably like a 2% chance that I will at least be yelled at. And there's a chance that that could escalate further. I've been yelled at at some sketchy subways before too, but... I don't know. It's like the Quiznos, they, they, they tolerate it or something. Maybe that's regional though. What's, what's the sketchiest fast food chain, you think? I've been in some sketchy Burger Kings. When I was in university, there was a, a Burger King that was like the only food place open when Last Call was, and also it was surrounded by like, I don't want to say all the bars and clubs in the city, but it was surrounded by like 30% of the bars and clubs in the city within walking distance for sure. So we got like a lot of drunk people, and my town has a little bit of a reputation for being rowdy and kind of like a, good lord, he's a country boy, kind of way, you know? like. They provide the nation's food, but also they will punch you in the face if you look at them funny. Um, 
so that that BK had like a security guard. And then in San Francisco, and I, I saw some fights there from time to time. Never gotten any myself. I'm a I'm a good boy who doesn't provide any of the nation's food though. So a little bit less economic heft. But anyway, um, I did go to a, a Burger King in San Francisco once, and it was the Burger King in or near Union Square. I don't know why. Oh, two Joker cards. And I went there at like 1 a.m. And then when I woke up the next day, I checked the news, and somebody had been stabbed there at like 4 a.m. So I was pretty lucky that that I was not involved. I mean, I was three hours apart, but still, you know, that's the, maybe the closest I've ever been to it. You never know. So, I mean, any fast food place, I guess, that you go to when you have you feel like there's a good chance you get murdered, that's, uh, that's probably bad. Wendy's, on the other hand, usually remarkably clean. McDonald's can get a little scary sometimes as well, but Wendy's, on the other hand, usually remarkably clean. Here, at least. KFC, pretty bad as well. And yo, KFC, Yum Brands, if you're watching this, stop taking shots at Subway in your new $5 fill-up ad. They get this ad, and the guy's like, check it out, for five bucks, I got a butter piece of bread, two pieces of chicken, a uh, drink, and uh, gravy, and mashed potatoes. And then he t turns to his friend and goes, what did you get for lunch for five bucks? And he goes, I got a long sandwich. You got a problem with long sandwiches? What... I don't understand why you have to... Look, you could just sell me on the $5 fill-up. It's not hard to sell me on, on fast food. This is pretty good. However, you make me not want to purchase your $5 fill-up because of your adversarial stance towards Subway. I understand, you know, businesses have to compete and whatnot. At the same... I guess we can play this. At the same time, why you gotta tear down Doctors Incorporated uh, as a result of your heinous uh, smear campaign, I will continue to not eat at KFC, mostly because whenever I say, hey, you guys want to get some KFC, people go, oh, what's wrong with you? But I actually am quite a big fan of the Big Crunch combo, and, you know, some fries and gravy. Would it kill you to make sure the gravy's always hot? Like, come on, this is not, like, it, act like you've been there before. On the other, ooh. Alright, I'll shut up. Yeah, we'll try this. I went, I went to a KFC when I was at my I would say ancestral home, and I was at my parents' house like a month ago. Mm, yes. Where, where do you live? You want to go back to your place? I'm afraid, my lady, that we cannot, as I am currently living in the domicile of my ancestral home. What does that mean, Ezekiel? I live with my parents. Okay, that's cool. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. It's a recession. Uh. I went, I went back to KFC, I would say back, it wasn't like I was there recently, but I've been there on occasion. And they freaking, the, the gravy that they served with the fries was cold, what's wrong with you? That's like the whole thing! That's the whole reason you're at the Kufka. Get some gravy, maybe some popcorn chicken, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say that my human brain is above the animalistic nature that makes it, you know, enjoyable to eat deep fried pieces of chicken thigh. I'm not going to say that I'm above that, but I am above this whole cold gravy thing. Now, I ate it, all of it, but it was bad, and quite frankly, is that really what I expect when I when I pay $3.17 for a meal in this day and age? I don't think it is. I expect at least warm gravy as advertised. They also, like, and this is not an organizational problem at KFC, probably... Kate loves the KFC coleslaw, how could you not? Man, this is like, we're spoiled for choice here. Um, so I was like, hey, we'll have a side of coleslaw. And then they are like, cool. And they charged me for the side of coleslaw. And then on the plate, they gave me a macaroni salad. And I said, hey, well, I said, excuse me, <laughs> but let me, let me talk it up a little bit like I was like an alpha male or something. I said, excuse me. I said, hey, come here. Why do I have a macaroni salad on my plate? when I was charged for a coleslaw, and specifically asked for a coleslaw. And she said, well, after I charged you for it, I saw that we were out of coleslaw, so I just gave you a macaroni salad again. Yo, that is not common practice in the service industry. I'm not trying to make your job harder. On the other hand, perhaps you could have been like, oh, let me check if we have any coleslaw. Ah, oh, we don't. Would you like a macaroni salad instead? To which point, like, at that point, I would have replied, fuck no. If I wanted a macaroni salad, I would have gotten a macaroni salad R Us that's across the street in this mall food court. And by street, I mean promenade. I have no interest in your macaroni salad-based meta. 
And certainly do not want to uh, inflate your coleslaw numbers and then find myself eating a macaroni salad. That's just that's just bad business. Please help me, Dark Bum. This is a surprisingly long run considering how good it is. I'm not gonna say that that's a bad thing. Like I'm very happy we find ourselves in this uh, relatively tenable situation. I froze up there. That's okay. We're coming to the chest. We got an Algiz rune, a Joker card. Uh, the Algiz rune makes it so that we basically can beat the boss with one HP. I was gonna say zero, but then it's like, how did a dead man get inside of the boss room? Where did they even find a nutshell this big? This is a bloody big nutshell. I, by the way, so I was I was in England. I don't know if I mentioned it, but I was in the United Kingdom recently, <laughs> and. Um, I have to say, and hear me out before you go boo hiss, I was very surprised to see that there were no, like even in Piccadilly Circus, you know, kind of London's Times Square, there was no like Austin Powers impersonators. Now don't take that as me saying I think everybody in the UK acts like Austin Powers, that is not the case. However, it's such a touristy area, I'm very surprised that there wasn't at least somebody in like a, a powdered velvet suit going like, yeah baby, because tourists would be like, <laughs> that is, that's, that's, Bang on, buddy! That's pretty good! So, oh, that didn't turn all my stuff into pills, thankfully. So I'm, I'm just a little surprised is all. Um, I think if you live in London right now, first off, my condolences on the cost of living. Secondly, consider giving that a try. You might find yourself, uh, you might find yourself a new and fairly easy career. If you are English, it doesn't matter if you have the same accent. If you are English, just get that crushed velvet suit. Head into Piccadilly Circus, and whenever you see someone go, yeah, baby, also, like, could you give me some money? Give it a And I, I say this because, you know, having been to Times Square, you know, there's, like, naked cowboys and people trying to give you their CDs, and then you go, I don't want your CD, and they go, yo, you touched it, bro, I can't take it back, it's $28. Bro, bro, take my CD. Yo, you want my mixtape? Like, it, yeah, we definitely want both of these. It's a touch risky because of, um... The fact that we'll be at 1 HP, but we'll have 9 lives as well. And it turned us into Guppy, of course. Uh, so, it's... I mean, this is 1, presumably. Um, I'm just... That market is, like, on tact. Which makes me... Oh, my fucking God. Dan Giesling sends me a message on Steam. Are you even alive CSGO helmet? He sent me a CSGO emoticon. If he makes me restart this run, I'm going to be real salty. He did not. I appreciate that. What's our item here? Mode detonator. I mean, I should pick that up, but I, I love laziness, man. I love being like, hey, I don't need to... <laughs> this item sucks, go fuck yourself. I don't care. It's a good thing that there is not so many, like, you know, tourist trap stuff in, in London. Nobody being like, hey, you look like you could use a show. I got a special ticket price for you. I thought we were friends, Jeremiah. You sold me out, buddy. Uh, two drink minimum. The beers are like $30 a pop. Do I look at the time? Was I buying $30 beers? No, I was buying 30, I was paying $30 a month in rent. I was not, actually. That would be, like, extremely crazy. Also, my, my family paid my rents when I was in school. That's not me bragging. That's actually me just saying I'm not going to take credit for something I didn't actually do. Mom and Dad, you know, I love you. Thank you for your financial support during the nascent years of my life. I, I, I'm ready for this run to end. And I don't mean the ho, 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 ho. I don't mean that it's a bad run. I'm just, you know, it has been sorted. I'm happy. I got my sea legs underneath me. Um, maybe we'll do an Eden run next instead of going to random. So I might have a chance to see if people want me to random and still have a chance to get the lost. Or if they'd rather I use some kind of online randomizer. Or I could just use an online randomizer in the next one. Or I could just random in the next one. But that creates the, the dangerous situation in case I random the lost. And then this video comes out and people go, Hey, we didn't want you to random the lost. And I go, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> That would be a very northern lion -y way for the streak to end. Alright, that was a good episode. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.